We're teaching a subject to everyone that's got completely discrepant from the subject that we need in math in the outside world. The subject we're teaching is all based around calculating things by hand, and yet in the last decades that's fundamentally changed in the outside world for science, technology and education of all sorts, uh, of, of uh, engineering of all sorts. What we need is to be able to set up the problems right, ask the right questions, mathematize them, turning into math, and then deal with the results once you've calculated them. So what we need to do is take the 80% of the time we're using on hand calculating and just change that to doing much higher level problems, more conceptual problems, but doing them using computers to do much of the calculating. There's some edge cases where I think one still needs to learn stuff by hand, but that's the majority of the cases. So what sort of calculations that we, just as an example, that we are, we're, doing, we're teaching our students to do by hand that is not actually advancing them? I would say inverting a matrix would be a great example of that. So, you know, problems where you end up using a matrix and generating, you know, a, that's the problem that you've set and working out an inverse, that's all highly valid. Knowing when you'd use a matrix and why you'd use a 100 by 100 matrix, not just a 2 by 2 one, all highly valid. But the actual procedure for taking, let's say, a 2 by 2 matrix and doing the inverse seems a complete irrelevance. Nobody does that by hand and computers do it. But, so I, I, I can present an argument you have heard a million times before. Um, ha teaching students how to do long division by hand, nobody does long division by hand anymore, they use a calculator, uh, nevertheless teaches them the concept of long, uh, of division, at least in theory. And so even, so we're teaching them a skill that they are not going to use in order to teach them a concept. Is well, I mean, I, uh, firstly, I don't know how to do long division, so I guess that's one, one answer to that question, at least for me. Um, I don't think so. I think there's been a fallacy that a lot of the procedures of calculating are somehow integral to understanding the concepts of maths and the concepts of the problems you're trying to solve and indeed being able to verify and work with those problems. But I think that in many cases that's entirely false. I don't know why people might think that the, the, the detailed procedures uh, of long division, I mean when you learn long division, if you, if you ever do, you know, there are detailed mechanical procedures. Almost no student understands why they work. In fact, it's actually quite complicated why they work. So all they're doing is they're In my learning. experience, generally they don't work, but that's... <laughs> well, that's also true, yes. But, but the fact of the matter is, you know, what are they learning there? They're learning a procedure which they can apply. They have no, it has nothing really connected with the underlying mathematics there. So now I do think that learning how to use and apply procedures is kind of important. And I think there's a really fantastic way to do that, which is also extremely practically useful, and that's called programming. If we get people programming things, they can make very exciting applications. They actually, it's an actually a useful skill in its own right, and I think it teaches the idea of proceduralizing. And I think that's a far more valuable skill than learning procedures of hand calculating. But you could make the same sort of argument here, because learning to program, you learn procedures that are actually quite arbitrary. They depend upon ha what the, how the programming la language happens to think about how to break up a problem. You, much of your time learning, pro one's time learning programming is learning the particularities of how this program deals with text as opposed to what its library for math is and how it goes together. Well, it's disconnected from actual... Look, I, I'm, I'm all for using the highest level language available. And what highest level means is you don't, you, you have to deal with a minimum number of details to do with the specific you know, ways it's doing stuff, that there's a level of automation as much as possible. So I, I'm, I'm all in favor of highly automated programming. But you know, in the end, yes, one of the things you've got to learn about procedures is you've got to work with the mechanics of the procedure and you want to minimize that and it's a very useful lesson in learning that the more that can get automated, as long as it works the way you understand, the further you can get. If you use high level languages, you can get further than if you use low level languages in many cases. But in the end, you're learning there a skill. I think there are three things about it, I think. You know, firstly, minimize the exposure to the details of, of that as much as possible by making it high level. And in fact, the number of programming constructs in the world these days is not that high, that it's not worth learning a lot of them. Uh, the second thing is, I think, you know, you can actually make real things that work and a ple you know, to many people seem to actually be interesting. Much more interesting than learning how to solve something which you didn't know why you were doing it. You can make things you're interested in doing. 
And thirdly, you know, it's a practical, actual skill you need. Programming is a real skill that people actually use today. In, in 100 years, maybe it'll have changed something somewhat different to programming in detail, in which case I would say use the other thing that you're actually trying to do then in real life. So I guess I'm not seeing the difference between teaching long division and teaching programming. So in pro programming, a typical environment, um, I'm not sure how high level you have to go, but typically you will be given, you have some set of objects, you want to find out which one is red or over 20 or whatever, and you do a loop and you iterate through them, and when you find the one that's different, you stop or whatever. Um, that's not how we as humans operate generally. We look at the pile of marbles and we say, oh, there's the red one. So you're learning this a construct for processing information that is essentially distinct from how we normally operate, which do, does not generalize out into the real world, but does have the advantage of teaching well, you. Uh, uh, Why is that different than long division? Two, two reasons. Number one reason, it's actually useful, right? People actually use it today. Well, programmers do, but most people No, but I would argue that as time goes on, more people have to program. Second point, though. Okay. I think the programming language style you're describing is what I would count as pretty low level. I mean, if you take Mathematica as an example, you can, you know, there's a thing which says sort. You can use much higher level. You don't have to make everything into a loop. You can do functional high level I pattern match loops. programming. But you can <laughs> yeah. use loops yeah, if yeah, you fine, want. Fine, fine. But, but here's the important thing. It's a bit like speaking English. There are many, many ways to construct a sentence in English. Now, do you always have to know the very best way to do it, the most optimal way? Do different people use different constructs to get across the same meaning? Absolutely. And that's sort of what we try to do in Mathematica. We try to give the broadest range of constructs so that people can pick what they actually want. Now, you know, do you have to be Shakespeare in order to be able to use English? No. Shakespeare might be better at using English than I am, but in the end, you're using it as a tool and it doesn't have to be, you know, but, but being able to use it is of crucial sort of importance to being able to make, make pros. So I think the difference with long division is that firstly, it's useful. Secondly, the languages, I think, are much higher level than, than you're describing at this stage and means that you can actually get very far, quite fast, learning, you know, learning different kinds of programming, which, yes, of course, in the end, you need to know the syntax of that actual language or the visual way in which it works, or something about that language. But in the end, that's a fairly small veneer on what's a fairly large body of kind of knowledge about how to operate procedures in general. So just one, we have to get back, so just one other quick question. Um, do you see this, uh, do you generalize this uh, point beyond learning math? Do you think it applies in other disciplines? Well, I haven't, but a lot of people following my TED talk have. So a lot of people said what I'm really talking about is creativity and problem solving more generally. The reason I think that it's so prevalent in math, this divergence between what we're teaching and what's being done in the outside world, is because the subject has so fundamentally changed. So there's no other subject that has fundamentally, you know, ancient subject that's fundamentally changed in the outside world in the way maths has, because of course now computing isn't the limiting step in maths and the outside world anymore. Setting up the problem and understanding what to model and verifying it are the critical steps in almost all cases, not not every case, but a majority, large majority of them. Um, and so the subject has kind of been turned on its head very positively, um, but we haven't at all changed the basis of our maths and education at the same way. And that, that sort of dichotomy doesn't really exist in other subjects quite the same way, I think. I mean, there are evolutions and changes in those subjects, and technology can absolutely aid in dealing with those subjects and allowing a much greater, greater range in those subjects. But I don't think the fundamental basis of it has changed. Thank you very much.